Hello everyone and welcome to Azam Sharp Weekly. In this video, I'm going to discuss what exactly is associated type and how you can use it in your Swift applications. Associated type is more of a feature of adding generics to your protocol. So let's go ahead and see that what, what do we mean by that adding generic support in your protocol. Let's say that we are building some sort of a HTTP client or some sort of a service class and we have different services. We have movies service or movie uh, movies or movie service. We have user service. And all of these services should have few functions together. So they, they will share the common protocol, which means get all, get by ID and so on, get by ID. All right, so we will probably create a protocol, which can be anything. I'm just gonna call it web service protocol, but you can call it anything you want. And movie service and user service is going to be conforming to the web service protocol. This means that they both need to implement get all and get by ID. So let's go ahead and do this kind of a scenario and see that how we can use the associated type. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a protocol and I will call it web service protocol. Okay, and this protocol can only be available on the classes. So I'm just gonna say over here that class, this means that the only person who can have this protocol, meaning you cannot really create a structure and then conform the structure to this protocol because this protocol can only be applied to classes and that's it, which is fine. And now what we will do is we will create our function and we will say get all. We will pass in the URL, that's fine. I mean, a URL can be different when you're when you're getting all the movies, when you're getting all the users, you will have different URLs. So that's why we are passing the URL. And we will have a completion because probably it's going to be an asynchronous event. We will use the result type of, uh, I guess in Swift 4.2 or something. And we have to pass something over here. And the second argument can be error. Maybe something bad actually happened. And this is not really going to return you anything, okay? Now, if I go ahead and create a movie service class, I can go ahead and conform the movie service to web service protocol. This means that I need to implement get all, but there's already a problem with the get all function definition in the web service protocol. And what exactly is the problem? Well, the problem that you're facing is that we don't know what type is it going to return. Now we can always go ahead and change this. Uh, we can say get all movies and we can go ahead and return movie object or a list of movies, kind of like this. I mean, there is no movie class. We can go ahead and create a movie class if you want. There we go, simple movie class. But that's not what we wanted to do. We wanted to simply create a function called get all and provide the type over here that that type can be movie, but that type can also be user. So if I go ahead and create another structure called user, and we will simply say the username, that's it. So how can I accommodate that? I mean, I don't want to create another function, which is get all users, so this is not, not good. So what can I do? I have to provide some sort of a type over here that is coming from, or that is determined from who is using this protocol. But how do I do this? So this is where the associated type come into play. It acts as a generic for your protocol. So I can go over here and I can say associated type and we will simply call it model. You can call it anything you want, be a little bit more descriptive. So I'm just using model. And this type, we can just put it right here. So I can go over here and I can say model. 
Now, where is this type coming from? Well, this is coming from the actual class that is conforming to the web service protocol. Let's go ahead and see. So if I go over here and I implement my movie service now, obviously the movie service is not conforming to the protocol web service protocol because we are missing the model and we are missing get all movies. So let's go ahead and implement some part of it. There we go. You can see that we are now asked that, hey, you need to provide a value for the model. And okay, the value for the model is movie or the type for the model is actually movie. This means that when we use, when we call the get all movies function, which is in the web service protocol, the model, which is right here, will be replaced by type movie. Now I can go over here and implement get all movies. And you can see that now it is movies already injected. Now, one other way is to not provide the type also, but simply provide the type over here. And this is kind of like the same thing. It's basically saying that, well, the type for get all movies for our, from coming from the web service protocol will be movie. So we don't explicitly have to provide the type, but I would rather provide the type so that everyone will know that this will be returning that the model will be the movies. All right. So this is one way to, to do those kind of things. Now, if I go ahead and create another class and I would say user service, and it is also conforming to the web service protocol, I can go ahead and provide type alias, or I can simply go ahead and provide, uh, well, it shouldn't be called get all movies, right? I mean, let's call it get all. There we go. So I can provide a type alias over here if I want to, or I can simply implement the get all function and provide the type over there. That's perfectly fine. I'm gonna say model and the value of model will be a user. This means that when we are calling the get all function, we are explicitly setting the type of model to be user. Now, again, this is not really required. You can eliminate this and simply call like in the get all, you can see that we can just replace it with user if you want to, that's also going to work. So it's completely up to you. So there we go. Using the same protocol, which is the web service protocol, we have implemented the concrete classes, user service and movie service. And they both are using the same exact definition, which is the get all function and injecting the type, which is a generic type later on by providing a type alias. So this is how you use associated type in Swift language. If you want to support my channel, then the best way would be to check out my Udemy courses. I have many different courses on many different technologies, usually or mostly iOS. You can see that I have a course on Swift UI declarative interfaces for any Apple device. This is the best-selling course and the most complete course, 21 plus hours of Swift UI. Then I have a second course, which is right over here, which is just got released. And this is about MVVM design pattern in Swift UI. So how to create applications in Swift UI using MVVM design pattern. I have courses on Rx Swift. I have courses on Flutter, if you ever want to get started with Flutter. And also I have a course on server side Swift using Vapor. So if you want to run your Swift on the server, that's the course for you. And the course goes on and on. You can see very, very important course, JSON parsing, very, very important because you do it in every single iOS app, JSON parsing to get that course also. The best way to get this course is to check out the YouTube description and you will find the links to all of these courses. Click on the link and get the course. If you also like, there is a link of Patreon on the, in the YouTube description. If you want to become a monthly subscriber, monthly a donation, that will be great too. Anything helps. Thank you so much, and I really hope you enjoyed the video.